All right, folks, I'm not sure what's going on here. We're waiting on our very special guest in the meantime. If we have to reschedule, we have to reschedule. That would be unfortunate, but not a world-ending catastrophe. So I guess I'll talk on my own about Harn World for at least, I, I can go probably quite a long time, but uh, but we'll see if Grant uh, is having technical difficulties or what's going on. I haven't gotten any notification that that's the case yet, but uh, hopefully we will have him along very presently. Sorry that we are ex already late. Uh, so let me talk about Harn, and I see we're we're having autofocus problems again. That's something that I probably should look into fixing. Why that doesn't work correctly? So I've got the PDF of the uh, the main hard world, what we used to call the regional module, um, up, and that's kind of like the basic introductory product, and it's one piece of the thing that is getting kickstarted right now in a big, pretty big hardcover. And if Columbia follows through on their typical paper quality, uh, it's going to be a thick book even though it's only going to be like 256 pages. So the basic uh, the basic idea of the setting is that it's it's a it is a setting that is quite historical flavored, historically flavored and and in particular um it is I don't want to say based but it it it, it does a lot uh with actual medieval European culture and it's pretty closely modeled on uh say late Anglo-Saxon Britain um, and, and a number of the elements are in there. There's also a lot of differences, but a lot of the things that you might expect from that level of of that sort of general time frame of history are kind of in the setting. You have feudal lords. You have a, a very well developed and established feudal system in most places. Um, you also have a lot of bizarre fantasy stuff here and there in the setting. Um, but you also have things that weren't really that prominent elements quite that early historically, like uh, a well-developed guilds system, for example. And that's that's talked about in the uh, in the main module. Of course, I'm starting on the last page because I'm a knucklehead. Um, but, you know, it, it also goes without saying that it is very hard to undersell these maps. Um, I put one up in the background and I'm going to pull one up here. I've got all of these in, let me pull up a different one actually for a change. Let me pull up Ivinia because that is a thing that is available right now. Um, so this is what, what again, we used to call the regional map. And there's four of these that Columbia Games has done. And then they've done a series of Atlas maps, which I believe you could still order in print. But to be honest, I'm not sure anybody does that anymore. You just buy these things and in digital format nowadays and drive through is generally where I go for that because I like the way that it manages the files a little better than I like buying it directly from Columbia, but I have certainly bought stuff directly from Columbia as well. I mean, these maps are absolutely gorgeous and they're ex also extremely utilitarian. Um, so we have a lot of uh, terrain types. Uh, the, the way these maps and, and Robin Crosby, the creator of Harn, did, I believe, did these maps himself. And uh, the, the the way these work is that the texture shows the sort of elevation. So the hills are uh, these kind of little dotted areas right here. And the mountains are this sort of uh, textured area. Um, and then like swamps or low lying areas have their own texture as well. And the vegetation is shown by the culture. Um, and Arvinia has an index too, but we're kind of talking more about Harn. I think I have the, I'm not sure what just happened there. Let me pull up the Harn map as well here. Uh, the, you know, the one that we're, we're more familiar with and, and I can speak more intelligently about the, the, the cities and civilizations and stuff like that. Um, so if we go over to Caldor, for example, to take our kind of what a lot of people feel like it's, is the best place to like start. A campaign right um aside from the tone of the setting it is largely a always been a system neutral setting so you can use it for pretty much whatever setting you want right um i concur completely that the maps are uh, magnificent and uh, these are my favorite fantasy maps and I don't think it's particularly close. And that's not to say that there aren't some nice maps out there. There certainly are. But these are these are my favorite both for beauty and for utilitarianism. Um, 
So if we look at Caldor, we could see that it's kind of this river valley, right? You've got the Cald River here, uh, the big estuary. Um, and I don't need to do that. I can just drag this around. Um, and then you have a, you know, in the areas around the rivers where the good cropland is found is where you have habitation. It's a little bit hard to see on um, on the map here, but this, uh, this sort of yellowish color is cultivated area, which is... I'm not positive something I've seen on more than another very small handful of fantasy maps for RPGs is where is the cultivated land? Um, Caldor is a feudal kingdom. The king is childless, at least legitimate child, legitimately childless. Um, and he is also quite sickly and may die at any moment. But he's been on the throne for like 15 years and he may have died at any moment for the last 15 years. So there is an anticipation of a power struggle when he finally croaks. Um, and that is in the year 720 TR, or Tuzin Re Reckoning, uh, which is the, 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 the dating system in Harn. Um, and this is uh, from the establishment of the sort of proto-kingdom of Meldoreen uh, 720 years before. And unlike a lot of settings, Harn, and that, remember, this thing's been around since the early 80s, right? 82 or 83 um, but they have always said no meta plot. There's plenty of plot, but what you do with the plot that we have here in the world is up to you. So they have never advanced the timeline. They've given tons of adventure seeds, like discrete adventure seeds, um, as well as just the kind of things that are built into the setting scattered throughout the text. Um, and the the anticipated Kaldoric succession war is one of those things. Um, so you could take that in a number if you, you set your campaign here. Um, you can take that in kind of any direction you want. It can absolutely devolve into a Game of Thrones type of political intrigue and backstabbing and all that stuff. Or, you know, King Minigath might decide, uh, I think it's Minigath, uh, or yes, it is Minigath, um, uh, that he has going to name one of his bastard sons his heir and, and, you know, maybe there's a brief struggle and that's it. Um, or maybe there's no struggle at all. Uh, maybe a usurper will usurp the throne, right? There's a, a lot of infrastructure built in around the nobility of, for example, Caldor. And all the kingdoms are the same way, right? You get enormous detail um, on, on the setting, on the social structures that are present in the setting, um, largely on the island of Harn itself that is feudal with <coughs> kind of three exceptions. In a broad sense, uh, on the one hand, you have the Thardic Republic, and and that's up here centered around the cities of Koranon and Sharan, um, and this is the Thard River that runs from Lake Banath into uh, the Gul Boca Bay. I guess I think this is the Gulf of uh, Gulf of Aderwin. Uh, this is the Gulf of Andurian. Um, and these are two relatively big cities, and and as was the case. Um, in you know medieval Europe, these are not what we would think of as big cities today. Um, so to answer a couple of the questions that we have uh, going on here, uh, I believe that these maps, the regional maps, were done by N. Robin Crosby. I'm happy to be corrected on this. The Atlas maps, however, are being done by Tom. Um, and there hasn't been a new one in a while. And <clears throat> I'm going to pull up one of the Atlas maps here, too. And we'll do it in PDF. And I don't have these keyed to a particular area. But basically, there's a square grid overlaid over this, this regional map. And each of the squares gets an atlas map. Now, they're not all done. Um, map uh, Outdoor maps for hexes for RPGs are not uncommon at all, actually. Um, it used to be quite strange to not see hexes in an overland map. But sometimes you do nowadays. Uh, but usually that's because there's no grid at all, right? Hexes are there to regulate, for the same reason they are in a war game, they're there to re help regulate movement, right? These are hex. These are five league hexes. Um, so the, the island's pretty big. And I want to say that's a there's a key on here that tells you what the scale is. Yeah, five Harnick leagues or approximately 20 kilometers or 12.5 miles. So that's a... A modest day of travel. Uh, you're not really pushing yourself to move 12 miles a day. I'm going to pull up a random Atlas Arnica map here. 
which will take a second to load. The Greyhawk map on the folio in the folio did not have overlays. It had an actual hex grid. You may be thinking of the Forgotten Realms maps in the original Forgotten Realms box. Um, that did was it was a gridless map, but it did have the transparent overlays. Uh, that is a very famous map by artist Darlene. Um, that is still a legitimately great map. And and uh, uh, Greyhawk Grognar, which is a fine Greyhawk channel, and and he covers a lot of like old school RPG stuff as well. Um, has a set of Greyhawk curtains in the background. I was like, wow. Do I need those? I think he had them custom made. But this is this is one of the Atlas maps. Uh, oh, very good. Yep, yep, yep. Ex it's exactly right. But they did do, TSR did do the transparent overlays with the Forgotten Realms, which was, is another thing I don't think I've seen very often. I would have preferred to just see a hex grid. But this is one of the Atlas maps, and this is um, I-1. So if we go over here, uh, wait a minute, I-1 doesn't make any sense. Um, it's Orball. What is the actual grid square on this? It says I1, but it's, oh, it is I1. Okay, so if we, we zoom in over here, and we're getting the weird scrolling effects because I'm being an idiot, by the way. This is I1, okay? This square right here, okay? So I is the column, one is the row. So we can see we've got these, so the, uh, the hollow circles are keeps and the red circles are castles. And though we can't see any of them in this view, the red squares are cities, which in Harn is defi defined as a walled town. And these tend to be um, the higher, po highest population cities as well. And I, I believe that's always the case, but there, there's a couple of them that are pretty small. Um, and if we zoom in here to the... Uh, we, we can see that we have, ah, I keep doing it. That's because I've been working in the 3D printing software um, and you, you mouth, middle mouse wheel to scroll around and I, I'm doing that by mistake. Uh, we see that we have these same two castles, Zuden and Marby, um, but we also have a, a, a large number of smaller like hills or mountain peaks. Um, we also have uh, a number of additional sites and mines and things like that that are, um, not present on the regional map, and we have elevation lines. So we have some sense of, you know, what the elevations look like. And you can see that we're kind of getting into mountains. And once again, the colors represent, um, the colors do represent uh, vegetation. Um, there is a key over here on each of these things. There's also like a master key that's free to download. I wouldn't even call this a continent. This is a big island. Um, it is not uh a continent sized place but to be honest you don't need a continent sized place and if you want one there's a continent just to the east it, it, that gives you a lot more space now the um the uh you know a, a lot of the detail that's that's come from harn over the years has been centered on the island of harn itself uh they did release um uh, they did release, uh, you know, Ivinia and some some a king, couple kingdom modules for that, and some site locations and things like that. Um, there's not a lot on Shorkina, um, which is the area directly to the east of Harn, um, and I can show you the uh, the regional map of that as well. <coughs> nah, not that one. It's Sharkina. Um, and this area is uh, is very different from Harn. This is much better developed, much um, much more densely populated, although it's still kind of medieval, so the population density is not that high. And having done a fair amount of demographic research on the Middle Ages, um, the, the population density on this world is fairly low. Um, if you look at uh, like medieval England in 1000 AD, for example, then you look at the population density of Harn. Harn is quite a bit lower. Harn is more comparable to the population density of, say, Russia in that in that period. Um, but this is dominated by the northern part of this large feudal kingdom of Shorkina. Um, and there's some additional states on here. And uh, we've got the island kingdom of Kelumbi, which is uh, a, a, an Ivinian kingdom um, settled by Ivinians. Um, and it is the largest 
city on any of these maps. I'm not sure that's quite true, but it's it's much bigger than at, at 23,000 inhabitants. It's much larger than any of the cities on Harn. Uh, Harn uh, tops out, I think, uh, Coronan is like 13 to 15,000, something like that. Um, so, and it's a huge trading hub. It's on a natural harbor and all that stuff. So the Avinians love to come here and trade. Um, you've got, you know, and there's a, a short key a, a regional module with some information on all of these kingdoms. So the, the, it's, it's really richly detailed. Um, it, and yet it's pretty flexible, right? If you want to run a, um, if you want to run a, uh, a political entry campaign, everything you need to do is in there. If you want to run a hex crawl campaign, everything you need to do is in there, including the hex map. Um, and you know, un you know, mystery, mysterious sites, large and small, um, on which there's, uh, let's go back to the Harn map. It's this one. Uh, if we look down here, I'll show you the one that I actually have sent players to. Uh, this, these upside down triangles, the right side up triangles are mountain peaks. The upside down triangles are sites of interest which represent a number of things. Major Gargoon complexes, for example, the Gargoon are the, are the uh, orcs of Harn. Uh, for those who say they uh, are that Harn is, no, it's relentlessly low magic. Well, the, the Gargoon are there, and, and they're literally brought from another dimension to serve as the, the foot soldiers of an evil wizard. This was a couple of hundred years ago. Eh, it's about 500 years ago, actually, but uh, uh, but still, you know, major high fantasy element. This particular site, uh, Tessian, is an Earthmaster site, and the Earthmasters are a mysterious civilization that went away or died out or something that's left deliberately vague 10 or 15,000 years before, and they left um, very well-preserved ruins because they built out of materials that age very well. Um, and parts of the ruins tend to be ruined, and parts of them tend not to be. Um Arn, uh, this is, so, Meandry Mike asks, uh, isn't Avinia about the size of Scandinavia? It's probably smaller geographically, but it's it, it's a little hard to see that because of the map projection. Um, uh, Scott Connor says Harn is close to the same size as Madagascar. I think that's correct. I think it's a little bigger than the island of Britain. Um, and there isn't a major island, like, off the coast of it. There There is, but it's it's not comparatively, uh, the island of Meldorine is much smaller than Ireland, for example. But there's a bunch of small islands off here. Um, <clears throat> my name is First and I am Funky, uh, mentions, and this is exactly right. Harn is a, a low magic setting, except where it isn't. And you as a game master can choose to, to explore the, the higher magic features of the island and the, and the world if you want. Um, they are all there. The, the interdimensional portals are there. The ancient, mysterious, uh, forgotten cultures are there. The elves and dwarves are there. Uh, the orders of wizards with renegade wizards, too, are all there. Um, so it's all the, it, it, whatever you want. Um, Tharda looks like it would be similar space. So, what the so Tharda is kind of actually. Um, this this big heath area is very similar to parts of Britain where. Uh, the the famed English wool came from, and in fact, that turns out to be one of the major exports of of the Kingdom of Candé, which is what uh, which is what most of this heath is part of. <clears throat> now, there's like three major nations. There's really three nations down here in the the area of Tharda, which is this kind of southwestern corner, right? The the area drained by the Thard River and the areas near it. You've got the Kingdom of Candé, which is mostly a, a well-meaning kingdom. The Kingdom of Rithim, which is mostly not a well-meaning kingdom. And the Thardic Republic, which is a sort of hanger-on from the the uh, the Karani Empire, which ruled most of Western Harn, and including a good chunk of what you see in this particular map view, um, a couple of hundred years ago, but then fell apart. Um, and a theocracy took over that ran this area for a generation. That that did not, it was a more gaffy um, theocracy. So obviously you can imagine that went poorly. Um, and then the, the area kind of split into a, a number of independent kingdoms, which coalesce into the kingdom of the theme and the kingdom of Candé. I'm simplifying 
um, and then the Thardic Republic. So unlike Imperial Rome, um, which starts as a republic and becomes an empire, uh, the Karani Empire starts as an empire and becomes the Thardic Republic. Um, and that culture there is very much inspired by the culture of Republican Rome with the patrons and the clients and all that stuff. Um, and, you know, potentially the dictators. And there's there's a, a at least one potential dictator uh, waiting in the wings uh, should a major threat arise. And, you know, there have been wars all throughout this place. There was a war between uh, Kaldor and Tharda not that long ago. There was a big war called Izar's War be between Kande and Rathim. Uh, not too long ago. Um, Costas Nicolaitis asks, uh, adventure or module recommendations? Now, the, the, the fact is that there, there really have never been all that many adventures published as such for Harn. There are a few. I am uh, fond of Dead of Winter. Um, it is not city-based. It's actually based in a monastery. We are We are about to pull Grant up here. Hi, Grant. Hi, Grant. Hey, sorry about the tardiness. I'm here now. Stuff happens. That's okay. I can talk. I love to hear myself talk. So I am happy to, uh, I was happy to talk uh, without you about Harn for about 20 minutes. So and I'm sad I missed it, but okay. So <laughs> well, you hi, did. everybody. But uh, uh, yeah, uh, welcome everybody to Grant Douglas. He's one of the, so Grant, uh, I guess we'll start. Tell us exactly what, what your role is at Columbia Games. Oh, I, I'm uh a little of everything. I wear lots of different hats. Um, and um, my dad is the big cheese and I'm the little cheese. Um, but uh, a little of everything. And it goes back forever, like since the dawn of time. Uh, Literally. In my view, yeah. Like since I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been a part of life. Um, so, yeah, a little of everything. Um Maybe the original kind of mandate was marketing and and, um, and selling, and then it kind of developed into more, uh, even more leadership stuff and planning and strategy and mm -hmm. and uh, writing and to, as well and executing. Uh, but um, it's been really uh, it's just an amazing journey, the whole thing. So, well, we're um, glad to see Columbia Games is still around after. Uh, a long time. I believe Columbia Games is about as old as I am. So older than me. Yeah. So um, that says something. But yeah. So uh, it, it depends how you be. If you're legalistic, it's from 1983. But my dad, who started Gamma Two Games in 1972, um, is the consistent entity here through the whole thing. He changed mm -hmm. the name of it in that year. So mm -hmm. it's 50 years last year. 50, 51, and counting. I don't think I realized that the name change didn't happen until 1983, actually. That's when, I, it, that's I, when it did. I had the connected. impression that happened in, uh, much earlier, but hey, or something new every day. There you go, a little gem. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was connected to the uh, to Harn, which mm -hmm. was launched that year. So Very interesting. And you guys had a, a very aggressive marketing campaign back in the day. I mean, I think... Uh, Speaking for myself, I, yeah, yeah, very, very clearly remember those fabulous uh, ads in in Dragon. And I never, I mean, there was like hard stuff on the shelf at the local hobby shop. But I, as a you know, like twelve year old or thirteen year old or whatever it was at the time, I didn't really quite know what to make of this encyclopedia Harnica thing that they had. I, so I didn't get turned on to Harn until I started to like somebody showed me some of the materials. This would have been in the very early nineties, and I'm like, ooh. I got to have all this. And mm -hmm. now I have an awful lot of it. So mm -hmm. um, that's right. Yeah. Well, I, I have to discover it and, and grasp it. It's an interesting um, thing. Not everyone does that, but then I, but oftentimes it just uh, happens after a little bit of digestion, you know, uh, chance to read and, and let it simmer in the mind. Uh, it also depends what you read, um, because Harn has a lot of different stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, this my thing that I like to tell people. If I'm if only given an elevator speech to tell people about Harn, it's um, it's that it's a world designed for gaming, and it feels kind of familiar, like a medieval England, but there's lots of elements of um, fantasy and monsters and things 
built in, um, but also controlled. Uh, it feels like a real world and you can play with it to tell your story, whatever that is. And we have a history and it gets to unfold. Uh, it has been written how it all unfolded. That sets up a whole lot of events in the present that are um, on the springboard could happen. And then we don't write any further from there and we let people develop their own, we call P-Harn, where they play out Harn how they want. Alternate so, dimensions are built in, so. Yeah, so that's, that's almost enough sometimes to get it across. If I have more time to talk about it, then uh, I want to explain that there's a, a lot of different cultures that were built in. Um, because it was designed for, for gaming, you got um, things like feudal cultures that are very familiar, but there's also a quasi-Roman Republic the Thardic uh, Republic, and it's a different type of gaming available there with client-patron relationships and a Senate uh, involved in the politics, whereas there's a sub relationship um, going on in Kaldor and Kande, uh, even Rethim, but there the church is kind of involved and it's interesting. The church is pervasive everywhere, actually. Mm -hmm. um, also by design that was to try to make a believable a believable church uh, mm -hmm. so they're, they're like real people right they vested interests in real things like their acres and their land and their their income and maybe even their their titles of course and and lineage and maybe going for the throne uh, and there's, all... there's there's of course tons of of plot hooks I mean, I, I every time I do a video, I mention, oh, here's the plot hook, here's the plot hook, here's the plot hook, just yeah. scattered throughout the text. Yeah. Um, so there's 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 it's such a rich venue for a, you know adventure <laughs> gaming, regardless of how you want to play make that play out, right? If you want to have your uh, political intrigue game, it's there. You want to have your warring temples, it's there. You want to have yeah. your renegade mad wizard bringing weird shit to the planet. That's that's in there. That happened. That that's in there too. Yeah, just about any style you want. So, in some ways, what most matters is that your first impression fit with your first impression. You know, that what that what you would like it to be. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's uh, sometimes the best way is to experience it at a, at a convention or where there's just a one chance to live in the world of harm for a minute without. Uh, any baggage and usually that is a, a very wonderful experience um, when you get a good GM tells you a story and it, the richness just comes across um, which is the point mm -hmm. and there's just so much material so let me let me actually let's, let's talk about that actually because I mean oh. Harn's been published since 1983 and and I, I think from a pretty early stage there was this idea that you would that it was all going to come in articles and you were going to be able to org clip it all out and punch it and store it and organize it however you wanted. Mm -hmm. And Columbia uh, was, was a, a little bit ahead of the curve on that in that, you know, they had these kind of ready to go in PDF, right. Uh, documents. And, and um, has, uh, do, do you feel like the, the, the ability to sell, all that st stuff as individual pieces in PDF has been like successful, a successful strategy. I think so. Um, the, the only thing against it is that it's perhaps a little daunting to see how much stuff there really is. There's a lot of stuff. Um, and maybe add up, you start adding up the numbers of what it all costs. It's a little daunting. And, and, and that's, that's true. I think bundled together, it doesn't change that much because it really is a lot of stuff, but it would look like less line items. And mm -hmm. um, that's a thought, of course. But uh, the nice thing about the, the articles is that they are bite sized. And for price conscious, we have a, an answer for that with our Harnquest subscription and our half price discount that's on PDFs associated with that. It's a it's like our perk, our gift back to you for supporting our quarterly releases of new stuff. Mm -hmm. which, which has been very consistent over the last eight, ten years or so. 
Pretty um, much, yeah. So. There's been a really good team developed, some writers around the world, uh, and it's kind of caressed into reality by our line editor, um, Brent Bailey. Uh, he's kind of superhuman um, at modeling, uh, shoehorning uh, the stuff that comes in into what we call the Harnick voice, um, which is just the right style that fits it with everything else. And it's it's uh, short and sweet and active, uh, the writing. And um, the Brent is a master of that and tapping the best of the world out there who are writing for us. And the writers kind of get to write what they want about what's interesting to them. And Brent manages to not only fix what gets written into something that's published, but also schedule it uh, in a very long view, um, planning, um, not necessarily knowing exactly how it's all going to work out, which is kind of neat, but he's got a lot of irons in the fire because there are a lot of writers out there. However, um, what actually comes down the pike is, is um, we work hard to hit that deadline um, about once a quarter. And I think yeah, Brent is credit for that. Brand new one right now, actually, too, just on top of this Kickstarter that we're doing, um, we're making sure the next Harn Quest comes out pretty much at the end of this month. And it's got two orders um, of Ilvirans mm. um, and that are involved in the Avashu trade, which mm. is a, right in the, in the map in the background. I can see uh, Mycin uh, at the top center of the map, Mycin where Arakakalai is. And in that place, the monster factory of Harn. Um, there are the god Ilvir. He makes monsters uh, in, a, in, a, in a simple way to put it, but they're creatures that uh, have souls that are recycled and they go out in the world and they live and do things and interact or whatever. Um, and then they, they presumably die. Uh, they cannot breed. That's important. Uh, it's, a, it's a kind of a game master control though too a, a design thing that there's a few of these and they're they're designed again to get the the world to be usable so there's like it feels real but then the fantasy is there and yet it's usable so you got the factory of monsters at, at its simple level that's how that's how you can use it but you can rein it in or control it because there's a whole story there uh, about the god Ilvir. and then these new uh, orders are involved in the trade where some of these creatures are captured by them or others and then sold to them and then ferried over to uh, civilized um, places in in um, Tharda and uh, Retham, uh, places where there are arenas and um, in gladiatorial arenas, like they're the wild beasts and they're sold at a premium. And so that's a whole thing. And so there are two articles because there are two orders involved in this. They're not the only orders of the god Ilvir. Um, and an order for clarification is like in an analog to Earth, there were different orders of, of monks, Benedictines and Dominicans and that kind of thing. Um, and perhaps that's not the best analog, but it's at least something people can understand. And um, that those are coming up in the hunt quest at the end of the month. So... Yeah, Great. we're doing that too. <clears throat> so let me ask about the kind of the sort of the transition from I mean, I, there isn't really a transition, right? You're still doing the articles, but the, the decision mm -hmm. to start doing these hardcovers, which there's been a, a series of Kickstarters now, yeah. including this new one, which is kind of the, the entire intro package, uh, all in one what what sounds like it's going to be one massive book. One what motivated that decision to start doing these in in single vault like large hardcovers? Well, it was demand. I mean, people asked. People asked, and um, and that it got asked a lot. Sometimes directly to me, and then uh, through the community, the forums, and um, places. And, and Carrie Mold, um, a writer um, and a contributor heavily to Harn Quest and Harn. Um, for, for a long, long time, um, kind of had manned um, helping outline that structure of the kingdom books that we started on last year, mm -hmm. or the year before, actually. Gosh, time flies. Mm -hmm. um, they 
in terms of that they would have what they would have, what the kingdom and a few other sites. And that was all planned out by him and and discussed in the community, the same writers group that does Harm Quest and, and things like that. Um, so it's not so much a transition as much as a parallel. Um, and there are still arguments for the article formats for different uses for organization, uh, modularity, um, expansion, um, things like that. So, um, but these are also nice. They look good. They look good on the shelf. They feel they good in your hands. Um, I know you've seen the ones we've done, and this one is more than twice as big. It'll really mm -hmm. be. Uh, same paper? Are you going to use the same paper quality? The same uh, thick, super thick paper? In there's this one? there's a, a little bit of an argument about that, frankly. Um, I have uh, been told that that's too thick, and I probably should come down a, a weight to like a 128, I think it is, from the 157 we did. Um, I'm going to try to do the thicker one unless they actually tell me I can't because the uh, price isn't materially different. It's it's more a technical thing about the, the binding and the sewing and stuff. Um, I've been saying that that book is going to be like two inches thick at 256 pages with that, that thickness of paper. With that thick of paper. So it might be prohibitive, and if so, we'll come down to that just, just a notch lower. But it, it'll still look great, and it'll be crisp. And, Mm -hmm. uh, so I got folks asking here. T tell us about the Harn Quest subscription. Okay. Well, the subscription is an easy concept. It's uh, as I was talking a little earlier about those two articles and the the new stuff that we put out every quarter. Um, and if you're a subscriber to Harn Quest, you get that delivered to you. Uh, you can subscribe in a PDF uh, or a print. Or both. Those are the three variables of Hornquest. Um, starts at twenty bucks a month, or sorry, twenty bucks a, an issue, which is four times a year. So um, the subscription is is opt in, opt out at any time. There's literally no prepayment or anything of that nature. You turn it on and turn it off if you if you need to. Um, while that subscription is on, and and the link there, you can go and read about it. But while it's on, you are uh, entitled to the privilege of half off of our PDFs. Um, so it's a, it's a kind of a quid pro quo. You support us by uh, letting us get new stuff out quickly to an audience. And um, then we give back with a big discount on the, on the catalog. And it's a real win-win. So that's that. We also added a brand new perk to HarnQuest in the middle of this Kickstarter rather dynamically in order to make sure that people who are um, on the fence um, but subscribers came off the fence and uh, landed on the side of getting this book. So this um, offer that we've added to HarnQuest is a shipping credit and it offsets the shipping paid um, in the form of game dollars that go into our Columbia Games account to be used later. Uh, that is designed to stimulate some HarnQuest excitement. It's a new perk for HarnQuest ongoing through the, the future Kickstarters if you choose to back them um, one by one, right? Um, and again, the subscription is completely non binding it's easy it's a show it's like a show of support is the way to think of it and it, its structure is 20 bucks every three months or so and um we really appreciate it when it helps us do all this good stuff so uh here's a question about uh published adventure so i'll i'll pivot that question a little bit Pivot it. ask about uh because because we've we've all, we've seen a lot of revisions really good revisions actually of a lot of existing material right like the new the new cities are just amazing compared to i mean both visually and in in terms of depth of inf and, and coverage of information uh compared to like the old cities of harn book which i i have a, i have all the old stuff i have all the you've seen the progression stuff. yeah yeah so, so we've seen a lot of of old material brought back in a in a dramatically revamped and improved format. But, but what new material can we expect to be coming down the pipeline in the next year or two? 
Well, the newest stuff that's coming out lately has been over in Avinia, um, mm. the, the realm up to the northeast of, of Harn, uh, analog to Scandinavia, um, that is, um, you know, um, been developed a long time ago in terms of the original broad structure of it, of course, and the map. Uh, and the uh, index of that map and the kingdoms and everything is named and, and, mm -hmm. and the kingdoms uh, and the politics and all that. Now, some places that had not been um, mapped at the local scale with castle plans and things. Um, mm -hmm. Freuheim uh, was just done a little bit ago. Um, Mangalana was redone admit if we're talking new it doesn't quite qualify except it's for a it significant through. revamp though it did go through the same mill of, of a big revamp and, and the, what you notice most and it does actually it was our answer our, our one answer to the thing about adventures was that the new kingdom sites or castle sites that have or city sites that have been expanded have locations uh, and, and for the most part it's the same locations that were described in the original eight page city as in it's the same litigant or 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 smith or um or building of, of whatever kind right and we only map just the right buildings to give a cross section of what's in the city to make it really work and we leave a lot of other buildings available for what the gm wants right now then within that um you know you, you uh get to develop that out as you want because there's a lot of of empty buildings it's 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 mm -hmm. kind of a nice touch um but the newer um the newer articles what we did rather than fill in the buildings okay which would have certainly been an option um we fleshed out the ones we'd already named with at least a paragraph or two about who they really are, who the people running the business really are. And in those paragraphs, in every single one, there's an adventure hook. So it's a different answer to the question about where are the adventures or how needs more adventures. If you mean by that, um, like the Trowbridge Inn style adventure, which we do have, it's a Trowbridge Inn, it's a place and it's a product and it's an adventure with scenes and acts and a linear path um to a story and it's also presented inside of what we call environment the trowbridge Inn location um and we have a few of those um but we also have a lot and and you'll attest to it a lot a lot of adventure hooks a, in, a, a, like it does then on every page yeah it, just about the, it, every entry is deliberate. We, we put them in and we describe them and we think, well, let's come up with something cre creative here. Why are they there? What are they doing? What's really going on? And it's really, that's, that's our best answer, I think, because it's actually the most flexible for the, for the products uh, and, and the world's life. Like you, you can use it again and again. You can live in it where those uh, the, the canned adventure as it were I, I use that a little bit derogatorily because it, it's kind of a one-off experience um and you could of course play it out again and, and things like that but nonetheless um there is there are i think about six or seven adventures in my website's list of adventures mm -hmm. um and a lot and, of fan created stuff over at lithia.com as well. There you go. That so that's um that's a that's a process. Um the the thing is I was we're trying to expand the world and complete the world. It's it's a massive puzzle, it'll take forever, but we're working on it and we you know been doing it 40 years, we could do it 40 more and that won't be done, but we'll still be doing it. Um but to fill in the the story and the content, um, a lot of different stories and inside each place and location um, is more inspirational and, and perhaps even more practical than one story for a location. Um, 
so that's our choice at the moment and I hope that uh, there's a balance in there with a half a dozen adventures to play and uh, then about many hundred hooks yeah and and it's not that difficult i mean I, I, you certainly i i think would have trouble fitting any published adventure into harn but there's there's plenty that you could fit i think uh you know just if let's hypothetically say you're running it in D D. Uh, something like the assassins not l2 yeah uh would you could drop that into harn just like that for example uh and and a lot of uh a, a lot of rune quest adventures actually would, would yeah. drop right in somewhere amidst the barbarian tribes possibly uh, so you can uh... absolutely just use whatever you want right and, and just make it fit something like really wacky you might have trouble fitting in with some yeah. super high high fantasy but uh you know, even so, you, you could probably make it work. There's some you pretty can most certainly shoehorn it and, and maybe adapt it a little bit, but really probably even at verbatim stick it somewhere. Yeah. I mean, there is a published hard adventure that contains an entire extra dimensional city. So, you know, yeah. it's there. Uh, and you can always powerful. say, Oh, you walk through a godstone and here you are in the temple of elemental evil if you really want to do that. Um, you certainly could. That's a vehicle back in the original design to help people mm -hmm. come to Harn was the concept of the inner world travel and the godstones are the physical thing left by Earth Masters. And you step in one of those and you pop out wherever the game master wants you to. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But it connects to Middle Earth. It connects to Earth. It connects to your own world. It, there's There's a book about that, too. Um, I actually dropped uh, I, I dropped a, a group of Ars Magical Wizards into Harn uh, at one point. Um, they were they were very confused. Uh, they you know it was a the setting felt familiar because it was feudal. Sure. But they, it was it was made immediately obvious that they needed to get out of there immediately. So uh, they needed and, to get out because they were going to get uh, apprehended, probably. Right? Yeah. Uh, the the Shek Var was like, "Who? Hey, who are these guys? We, we, let's apprehend people. them." um so yeah so they uh they, they they're a, a series of madcap adventures to get back to, uh, to actual medieval fantasy europe ensued so so yeah i mean the, the infrastructure's there um and when i ran a hard game actually um i i i used the godstones to send players to wacky places as well so you know the the, the infrastructure is there so i guess let me ask about uh to sort of tackle that topic as far as the sort of the system uh, agnosticism of harn uh, that was something that was built in from the beginning as well but there is also harn master the rpg so so let's, let's have some insight about that why there is a, it is a source of confusion but it's it's a very logical concept and it came about in a logical way because of demand um the original world um publication 1983 it um was conceived that it would need necessarily be used for any product that was meant to give it the broadest appeal uh, and it had a very broad appeal um again, and we Splashed the marketing all over the place and had distribution and not much competition back then and um, got off the ground pretty good. And then a bunch of people clamored for rules, which they knew existed because Robin had developed them. Robin Crosby had developed a prior uh, set of rules and gave them the name Harn Master. And that's uh, a beautiful product um, for character generation and, and playing, running campaigns, combat, even magic and religion and those things. Mm -hmm. All skill-driven, percentile, um, you know it well, of course. Um, the um, About maybe half the people that, that get into Harn um, also use Harn Master and mm. The others have a, a variety. I don't. Have, that's not. A, that's an unscientific answer. I don't have data really that uh, supports that, other than the sales of Iron Master stuff, um, which feels about that right level. And um, so it's diverse in that way. But then there is Iron Master. Came about in 1986, um, 
and has been revised a couple of times since then. Uh, it's in its third edition now. There might be a fourth someday. And you ask about really new. That's probably that's really going to be new. Although it isn't slated to change. Um, it, it's, there's a few things to clean up, and um, I think now the model might include more comprehensive magic and religion embedded in the fourth edition. Um, even though the third had a fair bit, maybe a little. Yeah, quick. they're in separate products, though. Yeah, well, that's right. And so putting them back together, if you actually break it down, though, it's interesting. I studied that a while ago. It's uh, that what's in Hardmaster uh, Religion, for example, is a separate product. Uh, a good amount of what's in that product is uh, information about the gods and the churches. And that is what you call source material in our parlance. And so wouldn't need to go into the Harn Master inherently to make it usable, right? Mm -hmm. What you need is some of the structure, this, the system and the generation and how it works um, and the invocations that we use that stuff that's specific. There's a whole lot of that. So I think we might be able to squeeze it all in, though. With If it turns out we can do this with Harn World, then I think we can have a mega Harn Master. And um, how much it's different won't isn't materially... I, I, I have no actual plans to change it. So it's, it's not so much important how it'll be a fourth edition. But we would call it that because it certainly would have some new stuff bundled together um, and it would be clearer and easier to understand if it's called a fourth edition. Mm, yeah. Uh, so let's, uh, let's talk about uh, the kick, this particular Kickstarter uh, then okay. that is live right now. And I think it's got what eight or nine days left. Something like that. It's the 14th that it's over mm -hmm. link in the video description. So, um, so yeah, tell, tell us what's in there. Because it's it's quite a bit of stuff. It's a hefty tome, like we mentioned earlier. Yeah. Um, so the chapters of this book used to be sold in in different books. Um, so Harn World, is the first chapter, um, it's sixty some pages about Harn from a fairly large level view. Um, of the, the different cultures that you'll encounter, um, a page or two about that, each about each of those. Um, some overview of uh, life in the medieval society, feudal life, manorial life, city life, a little bit about guilds, a little bit about religion, a little bit about economics, price list, money, things like that. Um, a little bit about weather, and uh, that kind of rounds out Harnworld in the old model um, as, as a separate book. And it's now a chapter that will be part of uh, Harnworld is the name of the hardback Harnworld, a chapter inside Harnworld. Yeah, it's confusing, but it is. Plus the, um, the the inclusion of Harndex, which is this sort of amazing, you know, encyclopedic uh whirlwind tour of the setting and all the names and all the historical figures and every little you know everything that is on that uh that map is is explored in there and at least briefly so yeah uh, so it's there's going to be a lot of material check out the video on friday that i did folks i actually walked through all the individual articles that'll be in there so Perfect. i'd like to thank uh thank you grant for coming by it's time for us to uh wrap the show up uh, I'd like to thank everybody for watching this evening and uh, we will have more Harn content coming in the future. Hey, thanks everyone. And thank you. Thank you for hosting and making this possible, Gary. Uh, you're, you're welcome. Have a great night.